Colson Whitehead is an author of currently eight novels, starting with The Intuitionist, which I have a sneak peek of in the back of my book today. He's the recipient of a MacArthur Genius Grant back in 2002, and also has two works of nonfiction to his name. The novel we'll talk about today has been part of Oprah's book club and was chosen by President Barack Obama as one of his summer recommendations when it came out. Now, this is Colson Whitehead's first Pulitzer Prize, and this work of art is called The Underground Railroad, a novel. It's an ambitious piece that looks to reinterpret the bravery of the former slaves and abolitionists to save people from the monstrous cruelty of slavery. The story does not take a moment to breathe when it comes to laying out exactly each and every atrocity of this time period. With smooth prose and a brilliant mind for plotting his story, Colson Whitehead has created a moving piece of fiction sure to move any potential reader. Uh, the Underground Railroad in this novel is exactly that, an underground railroad system hidden from slave catchers such as the Wicked Ridgeway, who has his eye on catching runaways Cora and Caesar after Cora's mother Mabel managed to escape his clutches. Mabel, a long time ago, left without her daughter before the story begins, which leaves Cora embittered due to the fate she's never thought she'd be able to escape. Caesar, a slave that was nearly freed upon the death of his previous owner, comes down to the plantation in Georgia that Cora lives on because Caesar's prior owner didn't leave a will to state her intentions to free her slaves. Caesar tells Cora about his plan to escape, believing she would be able to do it too. Another friend, Lovey, imposes herself on this journey and they make a plan for their escape, running into trouble well before their plot begins. Through the help of an inexperienced abolitionist, Cora and Caesar, having lost Lovey, make their way through the railroad to South Carolina. The Randall Plantation is furious about their loss and hire Ridgeway to hunt them down, whose personal vendetta drives him. When more trouble stirs and Caesar is separated from Cora, she's left alone as she continues her journey north, making it up to North Carolina, where they recently abolished slavery in favor of indentured servitude. She's certainly not safe, though, despite the changes in the laws, as she's taken life for her own freedom, and runaway slaves and their accomplices are in danger in North Carolina. She's hidden in an attic for a time until she becomes ill. Unfortunately, soon after, Ridgeway has tracked her down. So what becomes of her? So, so much more tragedy. But the tension remains high throughout the rest of the novel, too. It's a powerful work that highlights all the wrongs done to black people stolen from Africa and their descendants. Throughout the novel, there are a number of wanted posters that begin each chapter. These all come from real advertisements, digitally collected at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. More so, although it doesn't detract in any way from the story, the method that he has chosen to write in feels a bit detached. Informative, yes, but detached. I think if we were inside the mind of Cora to experience her journey through her eyes, the power of the story would be far more moving, with the back and forth between Cora and Ridgeway on her journey to finally be free. The <laughs> harrowing twists and turns are sure to capture you. One of the most interesting parts of the novel is a farm in Indiana, full of freed men and those that have escaped. There's a lot of tumult around the farm, owned by a man named Valentine, as not everyone on the farm is comfortable with runaway slaves coming there, as they believe it puts everyone at risk. This farm, I think, is a brilliant addition to this story. Harrowing in its own right, but these intricate little problems examined in this novel are aplenty. 
And that is why I enjoyed this novel and I look forward to more work by Colson Whitehead. And I hope that you will let me know what you think of this novel or any of his other books. Which one should I go to next? Thank you.